Oh, you believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, oh Ramadan. Ramadan. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we're discussing the topic, Itikaf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Dr. Zakir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, Dr. Zakir, we've been together for at least 20 days now, alhamdulillah, and we discussed many issues, but one of the most, I think, perhaps misunderstood uh, areas of the practices and the worship of uh, Muslims during the month of Ramadan is itikaf. Could you firstly explain the term itikaf and could you also, as uh, by way of confirming for the Muslims out there whether they should be doing this or not, um, is it compulsory for all Muslims to do it? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, al rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmeen, amma baad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي The word اعتكاف is derived from the Arabic root word aqafa which means to adhere to cling to stick it means to keep and it means to engage or devote something to another thing which may be good or bad. And it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 52, when Abraham al -Salam, he speaks to his father and to his people, saying that the images which you devote, those who do idol worship, etc., he's saying that the image which you devote, and the word you is akhifun, which you so devote, literally attached to, which are clinging to it. Here it's used in the wrong sense, in the negative sense. And there are also verses in the Quran which speak in the positive sense in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 125, Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 187. According to Lisan al-Arab, the word etikaf means to fully attach oneself to something. It means when someone habitates the mosque and he worships in it. In the Islamic Sharia, the word etikaf means to engage and retreat in the mosque and to stay in the mosque seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his reward. As far as the ruling of etikaf is concerned, whether it's compulsory or it's a sunnah, etikaf is generally a sunnah. It's not compulsory. It only becomes compulsory in certain cases if someone makes a vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will do etikaf if his wish is fulfilled. For example, someone will say that I will do etikaf for two days if my sick relative is cured. Or I may do etikaf for three days if I pass an examination. So if someone vows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fulfillment of his desire, then etikaf is compulsory. Whatever the person has vowed, he has to fulfill it. Otherwise, etikaf is a sunnah but it is a sunnah de moqeda, a very highly recommended sunnah. As it's mentioned in the hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Oaths and Vows, hadith number 6696, where the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that anyone who promises to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should obey him. And anyone who promises disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should not disobey him. And this hadith, Hazrat Umar, 
Melabi Lizetim, mentioned Sai Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Oaths and Vows, Hadith number 6697, he says to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I had vowed in the days of ignorance before he embraced Islam that he will do etikaf for one night in Masjid al Haram. So the Prophet said that fulfill your vow. Because the vow was good, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet says fulfill it. And there are various verses in the Quran which speak about etikaf. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 125, He tells to Abraham and Islam and to Ishmael and Islam that, O Abraham and Ismail, may peace be upon them, you sanctify the Kaaba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because people circumambulate around the Kaaba and they stay, they do etikaf, they retreat in the mosque. And some of the believers, they bow and they prostrate while worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here the word etikaf, retreat is used. It's further mentioned in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 187 that do not associate with your wives when you retreat in the mosque, when you do etikaf in the mosque. And there are several hadith talking about etikaf, including Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of etikaf, hadith number 2026, Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the Prophet, she said, that the Prophet used to do etikaf for the last 10 days in the month of Ramadan. And after he died, the wives of the Prophet used to continue that practice. So, etikaf, unless vowed, it's compulsory. Otherwise, generally, it's a sunnah, but a highly recommended sunnah. Well, I'm rather glad that you, of course, have confirmed that it is a sunnah. Otherwise, I would have had to have gone back for 16 years and repeated my Ramadan in the last 10 days. Well, doctors. Well, inshallah, after hearing the goodness of etikaf and Laylatul Qadr, Inshallah, you start doing it in your life. Inshallah. So Ramadan, inshallah. inshallah. May Allah make it easy for all of us, indeed, to uh, perform. Dr. Sakib, could you possibly explain to us what are the fundamental goals of Itikaf? The basic goal, the basic aim of Itikaf is to seek Laylatul Qadr. And there's a hadith mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number. 2627, where it says, the Prophet Muhammad he did kaf for the first 10 days of Ramadan. Then it says, the Prophet did kaf for the middle 10 days of Ramadan, and in a Turkish tent, and there was a mat hanging. And after that, the Prophet takes his head out of the tent, and he says that, I have just been informed by the angel that the night that the Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So whoever wants to continue doing etikaf with me, they can continue. So based on this hadith, we come to know that the main reason for etikaf is to seek Laylatul Qadr. And as we discussed yesterday, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Qadr, chapter number 97, verse number 3, Laylatul Qadr khairum min al shahr, which means that Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. That means the goodness, the power is much more than a thousand months. And if you worship in this night of Laylatul Qadr, it is better than worshipping for a thousand months. And if you divide by 12, it comes to more than 83 years. That means if you worship that one night of Laylatul Qadr, it is better than worshipping more than 83 years. You know, it is much more than an average lifespan of a human being. So the main aim is to seek Laylatul Qadr. And further from the hadith I quoted of Sai Muslim, we come to know that Prophet Muhammad in order to seek Laylatul Qadr, he did the kaf for the full month. The first 10 days, then the middle 10 days, then the last 10 days. And then it was told to him by the angel that Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days. And we also come to know that the Sahabas, they followed the Prophet right from the beginning of the month of Ramadan right till the end. That was the devotion the Sahabas had to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's again mentioned in the hadith of Sai Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2625, that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells to the Sahabas that those who want to continue doing etikaf with me can continue. He didn't make it compulsory. And those who want to do etikaf, they can do it at the place. 
not nice enough to be with him. So here we show the compassion of the Prophet toward the Sahaba. So the basic aim is to seek Laylatul Qadr. Besides that, there are various other objectives. Number one, besides seeking Laylatul Qadr, it is coming near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cutting off yourself from the other people. Number two, it is rejuvenating your spirituality and spiritually coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, when you cut off yourself from other people and from the worldly affairs, it gives you an opportunity to pray more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, offer nawafil, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask for forgiveness, to do zikr, and that brings your taqwa level much higher. Furthermore, it helps you in performing the fast much better. Well, normally when we fast, there are times that you may not follow the minute sunnas, and there are chances you may deviate and your desires may be there. So it gives you a chance to follow even the sunnas of the fasting when you're in etikaf. And lastly, when doing etikaf, you agree to give up the worldly pressures which you are allowed otherwise. The many things which you are allowed in the normal Ramadan, but in etikaf you give up the worldly pleasures and desires just for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, well, thank you very much, Doctor, for the answer. Uh, regarding the condition of the person who's performing, Etigaf, is he or she allowed to leave the confines of the mosque? Normally, while doing etikaf, a person should not leave the mosque. If he leaves the mosque, he breaks the principle of etikaf, and the etikaf is invalidated. But in case of emergency, if there is a need, then he can leave. For example, if a person wants to go for a call of nature, if he wants to go to leave himself, or if he wants to do wudu or do guzul, or to have a bath or wash himself, or if there is no one who can get food for him in the mosque, and if he has to go to eat, he's allowed to go out to get food. So unless it's a basic necessity, it's a need. As is mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Atikaf, hadith number 2029, the Hadith Aisha Mella, with her, she says, the Prophet, while doing Atikaf, never entered the house unless it was for a need. So if it's necessity is allowed, otherwise in the normal circumstances, you should not leave the mosque. And if you have to leave for a basic necessity, you have to come back fast as soon as possible. But nowadays, alhamdulillah, many mosques, or most of the mosques, they have a toilet attached to the mosque, they have a bathroom attached to it, and the wudu is inside the mosque. So there are less requirements to go out of the mosque. And furthermore, the wife of the Prophet, Hadith Aisha Mella Vipidita, she said, it's mentioned in Sunnah Abu Daud, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2467, that a person who does etikaf, it is the sunnah of etikaf that he should not visit a patient or attend a funeral or embrace the wife or have relationship with the wife and should not leave the mosque unless for a basic necessity. Here we come to know that while doing etikaf, it is not a sunnah. It's not allowed that you should visit a person who's sick, or visit a relative, or go out for family needs, or for earning money, or for a funeral. And except for a basic need, you should not leave the mosque. Okay, that seems to be quite clear in terms of the, the basic requirements of etikaf. Perhaps you could um, enlighten us with some of the things which break Itikaf, some of the acts which are not allowed during Itikaf. The things that invalidate the Itikaf, number one, is leaving the mosque without a valid reason. As I mentioned in my early answer, unless it be for relieving oneself, or to go for call of nature, for urination or fortification, or for doing wudu or having a bath or guzul, or if it, no one can get food and if he has to go out to get food, these are the only conditions. As a last resort, it's allowed. So unless it's for a valid reason, a person cannot leave the mosque. As I mentioned earlier, but nowadays, alhamdulillah, since there are toilets and bathrooms attached to the mosque, this requirement itself is a rare occasion. So number one is, if a person leaves the mosque without a valid reason, the etikaf is invalidated. Number two, if a person has sexual intercourse with his wife 
as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 87, that do not associate with your wives while you are in retreat in the mosque. While doing etikaf in the mosque, don't associate with your wife. So all the scholars unanimously agree that if you have a sexual relationship with your wife, the etikaf is invalidated. But if the wife touches you, just normally, you know, maybe she comes to give you food and she touches, then it's no problem at all. But if your wife touches with passion, or you touch her with passion, or you embrace or kiss, all those scholars honestly agree that it is makro, it is detestable. Some scholars say that it will break the etika, invalidate the etika. So here the difference of opinion, and whether embracing or whether touching with passion invalidates the etika or not. Because this verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 187, the word mubashara, that do not associate with your wife. Here, if it is specific meaning that, so it means only sexual relationship. So those scholars who say that it does not invalidate the etikaf, they take it in the specific sense, only sexual relationship. But touching with passion and kissing and embracing, it is makru, it's detestable, but does not invalidate the etikaf. But those who take this word as general, so they say that besides sexual relationship, even embracing the wife or touching with passion, it invalidates the etikaf. Allah alam, Allah knows the best. The third thing that invalidates the etikaf, it is menstruation and postnatal bleeding, post childbirth bleeding. The fourth thing that invalidates the etikaf, it is committing any major sin. The fifth is insanity, whether the insanity is due to madness, due to taking any drugs or medicine, or it is due to alcohol, taking any khamar, any intoxication. Because the ibadah should always be done in sanity. It should be done when the person is sane. If it's done in sanity, then the ibadah is not valid. And the last thing which invalidates the atikaf, it is apostasy. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter number 39, verse number 52, Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 65, that it was revealed to you as it was revealed to people that came before you. That if you join in worship, God besides Allah, then all your fruits will be useless. It will be fruitless. And in the hereafter, you will not get reward for all your spirituality. Therefore, if anyone does shirk or turns away, does kufr or does apostasy, then the etikaf is invalidated. So these are the six things which invalidate etikaf. May Allah protect us from falling into these errors and uh, may our etikaf be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look at the flip side of the coin. Which are the acts which are allowed during etikaf? The acts which are permitted during etikaf, that if a need arises, a person can go out of the mosque, as mentioned earlier, either relieve himself or to wash or to guzzle or to do wudu or if there's no food, etc. As the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet, she says in Sayyid al Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of etikaf, hadith number 2029 that the Prophet while doing etikaf never entered the house unless there was a need. The things which are otherwise permitted during etikaf is a person can eat and drink and sleep in the mosque. He can eat and drink and sleep in the mosque, but he should be careful that he should maintain the sanctity and maintain the cleanliness of the mosque because it's a place of worship. A person can even comb the hair, he can oil his hair, he can remove the unwanted hair from the body. He can cut his nails. He can do wudu, he can wash, he can have a bath, he can wear new clothes, he can put perfume. These things are permitted. As it's mentioned in the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Atikaf, hadith number 2028, that Hadith Aisha, with her, she says that while doing Atikaf, the Prophet, from the mosque, he put the head into the house and though she was during a menstrual cycle, she 
combed the hair of the Prophet and put oil in the head. It's also mentioned in the next hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Aitakaf, hadith number 2029, Hadith Aisha that she says that while doing Aitakaf when the Prophet is in the mosque, he used to put his head into the house and she used to comb the hair and oil the hair and the Prophet never used to enter the house unless there was a need. So yeah, it means that you can comb the hair, you can oil the hair and the other things which I mentioned. Further, it's also allowed to pitch a tent in the mosque or in the backyard of the mosque. It's mentioned in Sayyid al-Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Aitakaf, hadith number 2034, Hadith Aisha Mella, she says that the Prophet used to do Aitakaf for the last 10 days of Ramadan. And she used to pitch a tent for him. And after offering Fajr Salah, he used to come at the place of Aitakaf and enter the tent. It's mentioned in Sayyid Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2641. The Prophet did Aitikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan and after offering Fajr Salah, he came at the place of Aitikaf and ordered a tent to be pitched and a tent was pitched where he was doing Aitikaf. Further, it's also allowed for your wife to come and talk to you and speak to you while doing Aitikaf. She can enter the mosque and it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Aitikaf, hadith number 2035, that Safiya Milla was the wife of the Prophet. While the Prophet was doing Aitikaf, she entered the mosque and she came and she spoke to him. And after a while, when she was leaving, the Prophet accompanied her to the gate of the mosque, the gate of Umm Salma. And two Ansar men, they entered the mosque and they wished the Prophet salams. And then the Prophet said, that don't run away, she is my wife, Safiya Binte Hoyai. So the two Ansar said, Subhanallah, O Rasulullah, that means, how could we think such a thing? And they felt a bit hurt, that how could the Prophet think that we are doubting the Prophet? So then the Prophet replies, and he says, that the Satan runs in the body and can reach any part of the body like the blood can reach any part of the body. And I was afraid lest some evil thought may come into your mind. That is the reason I clarified the sheet my wife. So that gives us a guidance that when we are in public and someone doubts, we have to clarify. And even the Prophet did that, Alhamdulillah. So we come to know that the wives of the person doing Atikaf can enter the mosque. And further it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Atikaf, hadith number 2037 that Hadith Aisha Milla she says that one of the wives of the Prophet did Aitikaf with the Prophet. And further it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Aitikaf, Hadith number 2026, the Prophet used to do Aitikaf in the mosque for the last 10 days of Ramadan. And after he expired, his wives continued with the practice. So during Aitikaf, you're also allowed to speak to the wife and spend time with her. Zakallah here for your answer. Are there any recommended acts that you can enlighten us with during itikaf? During itikaf, that which I recommended is number one, that we offer the salah, but not the recommended salah, that the prescribed salah, that is a fard. Besides that, the supurgatory, the nawafil salah, as much as you pray, it is preferable. The nawafil, the sunnah, as much as you can, it is preferred during the itikaf. Number three is you should offer supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can. Number four, ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And itikaf is the time when inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your forgiveness. Number five, that do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say subhanallah, or say alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah, praise be to Allah. Number six, you can see the takbir and the kalma. Say Allah Akbar. Number seven, send your blessings and salutations to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number eight, recite as much as the Quran as possible. And number nine, that besides reading the Quran in Arabic, you can even read the tafasir. You can even read the translation of the Quran. For those people who don't understand Arabic as a language, you can read the translation so that you can implement all the guidance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
You can read the tafasir of the Quran in the language you understand the best. You can read the books of hadith of the Prophet. You can read the life and the seer of the Prophet. So these are the things which are recommended. And you should not do things which are extreme. As the hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Oaths and Vows, hadith number 6704, that once when the Prophet was giving sermon, he saw a man standing and the Prophet said, what is the matter? So the people said, he is Abu Israel and he has vowed he will stand and he will not sit. He will not go under the shade. He will not talk, he will not speak and he will fast. So the Prophet says that tell him that he should speak and bring him into the shade and ask him to sit and complete his fast. The Nathikaf is a thing which recommended things of a salah, but don't, oh, do I will not speak, I will not sit, I will not go into the shade. So the things that are recommended, as I mentioned, is salah, dua, asking forgiveness, doing dhikr, reading the Quran, hadith, etc. Zakla khair, Dr. Zakir. So we're going to move on to the next question. Dr. Zakir, could you tell us the prerequisites for uh, itikaf? And um, is indeed uh, one of the prerequisites fasting? As far as the prerequisites for doing etikaf is concerned, but naturally the person should be a Muslim, he should be sane, he should have reached puberty, and he should not be in the state of janaba, ceremonial impurity. He should not be sexually defiled. Person should not be in the state of menstruation or post childbirth bleeding. And the person should be pure while doing etikaf. And besides these, there are two pillars of etikaf. Number one, that is the intention. His niya should be seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking his reward. Number two is it should be done in a mosque. As Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter number two, verse number 187, that associate not with your wives when you retreat in the mosque. So but natural, while doing etikaf, you should not associate with your wife. You don't have a sexual relationship which they discussed in the last answer. And number two, it should be done in a mosque. And people differ. Now some of the people say it can be any mosque. But the majority of the scholars say that it should not be any mosque. It should be a mosque in which congregation salah are offered. And it should also be in a mosque in which Juma salah is offered. Because if congregation salah is not offered, and if a person is doing etikaf in the mosque, it will either mean that he is not offering salah in congregation, which is not correct. Or he may be going out to another mosque that defeats the purpose of etikaf. So, but natural, most of the scholars agree that it should be in a mosque which has regular congregation salah and preferably even Juma salah should be offered in that mosque. And this is a prerequisite, as is mentioned by Hazrat Aisha Milavitidita, Ridilo Anha, in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two in the book of fasting, hadith number 2467, that it's sunnah for a motikif, a person under the etikaf, that he should not visit a patient or attend a funeral or embrace his wife or associate his wife and should not leave the mosque except if there is a basic necessity or basic need. As far as whether fasting is compulsory or not, it's mentioned by Hadith Aisha please with her in the same Hadith of Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 2467, Hadith Aisha please with her says that there's no etikaf without fasting. That's her view. But if you read Sayyid Bukhari, volume number eight, in the book of Oaths and Vows, Hadith number 6697, which we quoted earlier, Hadith him, he said that in the days of ignorance, Yom Il Jahiliya, before he accepted Islam, he had vowed that he will do etika for one night in Masjid al Haram. And the Prophet said, fulfill your vow. And there's no fasting during night. So, by this permission of the Prophet, it is understood that fasting is not fard, but it is mustahab. It is a recommended sunnah that if you fast, it's preferable. It's not a fard to fast while doing etikaf. Zakalakh, doctor. Could you explain for the benefit of the viewers, what is the exact correct time to begin and end the itikaf, particularly pertaining to the last 10 days of Ramadan? 
As far as beginning of Ethica for the last 10 years from the is concerned, there is a difference of opinion between the scholars. One group of scholars, people like uh, Al Awzai, people like Al Thawri, or Imam Al Layth, may Allah be pleased with them all, they say that Ethica should begin after the Fajr Salah on the 21st night. Based on the hadith, which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Ithikaf, hadith number 2034, as well as 2041, that Hazraisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she said that the Prophet used to do Ithikaf for the last 10 days of Ramadan. And I used to pitch the tent for him. And after Fajr Salah, he used to come at the place of Ithikaf and enter the tent. So based on this hadith that the Prophet Muhammad after offering Fajr Salah used to come at the place of Etikaf and enter the tent, these scholars, they say that Etikaf should start after Fajr Salah. This is the view of Sheikh bin Baz also, may Allah have mercy on him. When he was asked that when should Etikaf start, he said they should start after Fajr Salah of the 21st day of Ramadan, if you want to fast in the last 10 days, based on the same hadith of Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. But the majority of the scholars, the other scholars, including all the four ahimmas, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And most of the scholars, they say that if you want to do etikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan, the etikaf should start before the sunset of the 21st night. Because the day starts with the sunset. So because if you have to do etikaf in the last 10 days, you have to do etikaf before sunset. And they say, because the main aim, objective of Aitikaf is to seek Laylatul Qadr. And Laylatul Qadr is in the night. So if you have to do Aitikaf in the last 10 nights, it includes the 21st night also. And since the Prophet said, as we discussed yesterday, that seek Laylatul Qadr on the odd nights of the last 10 nights, which includes the 21st night. So if you start from Fajr, you are missing the 21st night. Therefore, most of the scholars agree that Etikaf should start before sunset of the 21st night. And in reply to the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3 in the book of Etikaf, hadith number 2034 and hadith number 2041, that Prophet Muhammad used to do Etikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan, and I used to pitch the tent for him, and he used to offer the Fajr Salah, and after offering Fajr Salah, he used to come at the place of Etikaf. So what these scholars say, this hadith never says that Prophet started Etikaf after Fajr Salah. It says the Prophet came to the place of Etikaf, came to his tent because he wanted seclusion from the other people after Fajr Salah. What they say, even here, it actually indicates that if Prophet has to get the night of 21st, he started Etikaf before sunset. So the Prophet entered the mosque before sunset of the 21st night. So the etikaf starts before sunset, but he prayed in the mosque and he came to the place of etikaf, that is his tent, because he wanted seclusion from the other people after Fajr Salah. So according to the correct view, according to the major scholars, the etikaf starts before the sunset of 21st night, that is before breaking the fast of the 20th day. When you fast for the 20th day of Ramadan, before you break the fast, before sunset, you start your etikaf. And when Sheikh Utaimi, may Allah have mercy on him, when he was asked when should etikaf start for the last 10 days, he gave the same reply according to the major group of scholars, it should start before sunset of the 21st night, that is before breaking the fast of the 20th day. And the reason they gave the same. As far as ending the etikaf is concerned, major scholars agree that the etikaf should end after sunset of the last night of Ramadan. If Ramadan is of 29 days, then after the sunset of the 29th day, that is after the first day of Shawwal start, you should end the etikaf. If it's 30 days, then after the 30th fast is over, after sunset, the etikaf can end. But all the scholars agree unanimously also that it is mustahab, as some of the sahabas, they did continue even in the night till eat prayer. So based on this, some of the scholars say it is mustahab. It's encouraged that it should stay even of the night before Eid. 
that is the first day of Shawwal, and continue the Kaf, offer Fajr Salah, and offer the Eid Salah, and then go back to your family. If you have to offer Eid Salah in somewhere else, in some other place, in the Eidgah, you can have a bath, go there, and then go and meet your family. This is preferable. But otherwise, all the scholars agree that the Itikaf can end after sunset, after the month of Ramadan ends, whether it's 29th or 30th day. Jazakallah khair, once again, doctor, uh, for the answer. Something which sometimes comes up, question which comes up, regarding um, whether or not Itikaf is something which is solely a practice during the last 10 days of Ramadan or not. Is it? As far as Itikaf being done only in the last 10 days of Ramadan, it is not a must. Since Itikaf, as I mentioned, is voluntary, unless you make a vow, it's a sunnah. It can be done in any day of the year. But according to Imam An-Nawi, he says, the best Itikaf is when you're fasting, that's the month of Ramadan, and the best day in the month of Ramadan is the last 10 days. So the best preferable days are the last 10 days of Ramadan. But you can do any other day of Ramadan, any other day of the year. And when Sheikh Nasrud al-Albani was asked this question that can Itikaf be done any day or only in the last 10 days of Ramadan, he gave the same reply that it is preferable, it is mustahab. It's encouraged to do Itikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan because of seeking Layat al-Qadr. Otherwise, it can be done any day of Ramadan, any day of the year. It's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of Oaths and Vows, Hadith number 6697. Hadith Umar may Allah with him. In the days of ignorance, in Jamil al Jahiliya, before he accepted Islam, he had vowed that he would do etikaf for one night in the Masjid al Haram. And the Prophet said, Fulfill your vow. That means, Hadith Umar may Allah with him, he did etikaf in one of the nights, any night of the year. It's further mentioned in Say Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2641, that the Prophet did Aitikaf for the first 10 days of Shawwal. It's mentioned in Say Muslim, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2627, that the Prophet did Aitikaf for the full month of Ramadan, the first 10 days of Ramadan, then the middle 10 days, then the last 10 days. It's further mentioned in Say Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Aitikaf, hadith number 2044, that the Prophet did Aitikaf for 20 days in the month of Ramadan before he died. That means the last time he did Aitikaf, just before he died, last Ramadan of his life, he did Aitikaf for the last 20 days. And it's mentioned in the hadith that because Archangel Gabriel, he rehearsed with him the Quran twice. Therefore, for 20 days. And it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Aitikaf, hadith number 2026, that the Prophet used to do Aitikaf for the last 10 days of Ramadan. And after he died, his wife continued with the practice. So it indicates that doing Aitikaf in the last 10 days, it's preferable. It's the best. Otherwise, you can do Aitikaf in any other day of Ramadan, any other day of the year. Jazakallah khair, doctor. And um, my last question in this interview phase uh, regarding the topic itikaf. Could you explain the reward for um, itikaf? As far as the reward for itikaf is concerned, Abu Dawud, may Allah have mercy on him, he asked Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on him, that what are the rewards for itikaf? So he says that I don't know of any except some hadith which are zaif. It's mentioned in the Masail of Abu Dawud. And there are many Zaif hadith talking about the rewards for Etikaf. For example, it's mentioned in one of the Zaif hadith that's mentioned in by Albani in Ibn Majah, Zaif hadith of Ibn Majah, that anyone who does Etikaf and who seeks the reward and does not do any sin, it is as though he will get the reward of all the good deeds that he has done. This is classified as Daif by Sheikh Albani in Ibn Majah. There's another hadith which is also Daif, which says that anyone who does etika for one day, seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will make for himself three ditches between himself and the fire. Each ditch will have the breadth of east and west of the world. This is classified as Daif by Sheikh Albani. 
There's another hadith which is talking about the rewards of ethical, which is also daif, in which it says that anyone who does ethical for a day with sincerity and seeking the reward will have all his sins forgiven. So this is a daif hadith. In fact, there's a hadith which is sahih, which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, the book of Layl Qadr, hadith number 2014, that anyone who prays during the night of Qadr with sincerity, seeking Allah's reward, all his past sins will be forgiven. So if you do etikaf and if it falls on Laylatul Qadr, then inshallah, but just for etikaf, there's no hadith telling that all your sins will be forgiven. There's another hadith which is classified as Maudu by Sheikh Albani, that anyone who does etikaf for the last 10 days in the month of Ramadan is equivalent to doing two hajj and two umrahs. It's classified as Maudu, fabricated by Sheikh Albani. So there's no particular hadith which is sahih which talks about the reward for etikaf, but there are general hadith. There's a general hadith mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number eight, hadith number 6502, talking generally about the rewards for nawafil, for supergatory things, and it says that anyone who offers the faraid and does nawafil, Allah says, he will come closer to me. And nawafil includes supplication, asking forgiveness, Nawafil, Salah, including Atikaf. Someone who did Nawafil, Allah says, according to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he come closer to me. And I become his sense of hearing through which he hears. His sense of seeing from which he sees. His hand from which he grips. His legs, the way he walks. And whatever they ask, I will fulfill. So generally about Nawafil, but naturally there are various rewards. But specific for Atikaf, there's none which I know is mentioned in the Sahih Hadith. Well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourage us all and allow us all to do itikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us all by doing that righteous action in the last 10 days of Ramadan, Dr. Zakir. We have reached the time when the interview phase is over and we will be inviting questions from our viewers. Of which, of course, you know very well, better than I do, you are receiving thousands and thousands of them. And it's unfortunately difficult for us to answer them all um, individually um, and personally. However, we will be answering lots and lots of questions which we've deemed to be the most popular amongst the emails that we've received. So, Doctor, we've got a um, number of questions which have been put to us by our viewers. The first of them, one of the viewers says that there's a certain hadith, and he refers to it, says, the hadith says, there's no itikaf except in three mosques, famous mosque in Mecca, famous one in uh, Medina, and of course, Jerusalem. Is this a sahih hadith? As far as the hadith, what the viewer has asked, it's a sahih hadith, hadith of Bahaki, book of fasting, hadith number 8574, which is classified as Sahih by Sheikh Nasruddin al-Bani, that the hadith is narrated by Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him, and he says to Abdullah ibn Masood, may Allah be pleased with him, that I have seen people doing etikaf from your house to the house of Abu Musa, may Allah be pleased with him, in the mosque, in between your house and the house of Abu Musa. But I heard the Prophet saying that there is no etikaf except in the three mosques, the Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Nabwi, and Masjid al-Aqsa. So based on this hadith, there are a few scholars who do say that etikaf should only be performed in these three mosques, but the majority of scholars don't agree with that. They say that offering in these three mosques is preferable, you'll get more sawab. Because I just mentioned that if you offer in Masjid al-Haram in Makkah, it's equal to 100,000 sawab. If you do in Masjid al-Nabwi, 10,000 sawab. And the third mosque is Masjid Aqsa. So it will be much more preferable. But the general ruling is based on the Quranic verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 187, that do not associate with your wife when you retreat in the mosque, when you etikaf in the mosque. So it's talking about general mosque. The word is masajid. So you can do etikaf in any masajid. One group of scholars says any masajid, even if there is no congregation salah, which most of the scholars don't agree. Most of the scholars, including Imam Ahmad, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that it should be in a mosque where congregation salah is offered and Jumaah salah is offered. And when Sheikh Uttaymi and Sheikh Nasir al-Bani was asked, 
that is it true that you can offer only in these three mosques? So he said, it is preferable to offer in these three mosques, but it's not a fard. Etikaf can be done in any mosque as long as there is congregation salah and Juma salah in it. But offering in these three mosques is preferable. And when Sheikh bin Baz was asked the question, and again these scholars, they quote the verse of Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 187, that the verdict is general mosques. It doesn't restrict only to three mosques. And when Sheikh bin Baz was asked, he gave the same answer that Atikaf can be done in any mosque as long as the congregation salah. But if someone vows to do in these three mosques, then it's compulsory issue. Otherwise, as the general ruling, it can be done in any mosque where congregation salah is offered, Juma salah is offered. That's comforting to know. Thank you. Next question. Can we observe Itikaf for a short period of time? There's no limit as far as the period of Itikaf is concerned. You can offer etikaf for the short period or for long period, for a short while. The majority of scholars agree. It can even be for a short while, even for one hour. As Ibn Hazm, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that etikaf can be done for one hour. But there are certain scholars who say that etikaf should be done minimum for one day or for days. And they say this one hour is actually a period, doesn't refer to a day. But the majority of scholars agree it can be done for a short time, for one hour, for a day, for a few days. For a week, for 10 days, for a month, it depends upon the person. There's no limitation as far as the period is concerned. Jazakallah khair, doctor. Next question. Um, are women allowed to observe itikaf in their houses? As far as itikaf is concerned, according to the verse of the Quran, sorry, Baqarah chapter 2, verse 187, which says that do not associate with your wives and do itikaf, retreat in the mosque. So since the word is specific, the ruling is in the mosque, as it's a ruling for the gents, that they should do etikaf in the mosque. The same ruling applies even for the women. There are a few scholars who do say that etikaf can be done in the home where the woman prays, based on the hadith that praying in a room is better than praying in the outer room in the house, praying in the house is better in the courtyard, in the courtyard better than the mosque. But this doesn't mean, masjid literally means a place where you do sujood. It's more of a word where you do sujood. But technically the word masajid used in Surah Baqarah chapter 187 means a proper masjid, not where you do sujood. Because in the inner room, a person changes clothes and a person in the state of junub, sexual impurity, etc. So the ruling for the women, as far as the major scholars are concerned, if they want to do, they should do in the mosque. And that's what mentioned several hadith, including the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three in the book of Aitikaf, hadith number 2026, Hatta Aisha says that the Prophet to Aitikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan, and after he died, his wife continued with the practice. So the wife of the Prophet did etikaf in the mosque and there's no evidence to show that they ever did in the house. Okay, good. That's uh, very good to know. And next question from the next viewer. Is there any redemption on a person who breaks the etikaf voluntarily? As far as kafara is concerned or redemption is concerned, since etikaf is voluntary, if you break a voluntary etikaf, there is uh, no compensation. It's preferable if you want, you can again do it. But if a person keeps a compulsory etikaf, if he vows that he's going to keep for two days, if he passes the examination, for them if he breaks it, then he has to do it some other time because it's a vow, it's a fard etikaf. As far as voluntary is concerned, it's not compulsory, but even if he breaks the voluntary etikaf, if he does it some other time, it's preferable, but it's not compulsory. Okay, next question, Dr. Zaki. Does a husband have the right to prevent his wife from doing itikaf? As itikaf is voluntary, and when a lady does itikaf and she goes to the mosque, but natural, it infringes on the rights of the husband. So, but naturally, if she has to do itikaf, she has to take the permission of the husband because some of his rights will be lost. And if he gives permission, he has the right even to call her back if required, unless if she's doing an obligatory etikaf if she has vowed. And when she starts, then the husband calls, she should continue to go that the first. Otherwise, in voluntary etikaf, she should take the permission of the husband and the husband has the right to call her back if he requires it. Okay. Well, I'm afraid this is going to be the last question today, Dr. Zakir. Um, is it correct to teach somebody or give a lecture during, uh, it, whilst performing etikaf? As we mentioned earlier, the recommended acts while doing etikaf is to offer salah, to do nawafil salah, to do supplication, to ask for forgiveness. Uh, to do dhikr and read the Quran. So it's preferable to do these acts. But if someone really wants to learn something, especially of Islam, and if you teach, there's no problem. Or if you give a lecture 
or you give a lesson to someone, especially regarding the rulings of Islam, it's permitted. Fine, because you're teaching someone getting in closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zaki. That's unfortunately all we've got time for today. But thank you very much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and me and all the viewers for watching and attending this session on Itikaf. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, I hope that you have enjoyed and benefited from the show today and that you will take lesson, take heed of all the uh, answers that Dr. Zakir Naik has given today on the subject of Itikaf. Tomorrow we will be discussing Ramadan, the month of self-improvement and Islam. So please do join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صب وعتق وقنوت فيه صدق يومنا صبر ورزق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأطل مسعدا أهلا وخلا لتوفي